Hey everyone, I'm happy for the chance to speak to you today to try to bring a broad overview of canola diseases across the Canadian prairies from 2021. My name is David Kaminsky and I'm a specialist in field crop pathology with Manitoba Agriculture and Resource Development. I'm based out of Carmen, Manitoba. And I like to call Carmen the center of the known universe. Now that may reveal a bias, however, it's a good reminder that Without traveling across the prairies, it's easy to be ethnocentric to focus on one's own geography. So for a broader perspective, at least on canola disease survey results, I'm leaning on my counterparts from Saskatchewan, Dr. Ali Riza Akavan, and on Justine Cornelson, a regional agronomist with the Canola Council. Together, Ali Riza and Justine presented the oilseed disease situation report at the recent Western Committee on Plant Diseases. And I've also had help from my colleague with ARD, the oilseed specialist, Dane Fraze. Dane is also speaking on the broader subject of canola agronomy. We didn't want to have too much overlap in our presentations, but there will be some. So let's get into it. Here's a quick snapshot of the growing season we had in Manitoba. It was a drier spring and summer than any I've experienced in the last 20 years. And that makes four consecutive dry years in Manitoba. With scant moisture going into the fall of 2020, we needed a regular supply of rainfall through the growing season. Spring was cool and dry, so seeding progressed without interruption, unless you delayed canola seeding to await better surface moisture. When canola did germinate and emerge, it was soon beset by flea beetles. For various reasons, heat canker, late frost, there was a lot of reseeding required. This, of course, results in crops with quite different stages of development. And by mid-July, the majority of our cropland was under significant moisture deficit. Our friends at Crop Insurance can provide us the numbers on reseeding acres and as you can see, that's not a pretty picture. So here are the canola diseases on which I'd like to focus. They are not listed by economic importance nor potential yield loss. I simply put them in alphabetical order. Let's look at black leg first, a disease that arrived in Western Canada shortly after canola quality brassica napis replaced rapeseed. The most popular Argentine canola cultivar at the time the late 70s was Westar, and it went down hard, suffering major yield losses. But aggressive resistance breeding soon led to cultivars with good resistance to Black Lake. There was a momentary setback when herbicide tolerance was introduced, but again, breeding came to the rescue. When we survey, we cut through stems at the base of the plant and rate the internal discoloration on a zero to five scale shown here. On uh, black leg, we also use a zero to five scale. And um, this plant here would probably be in the range of a three to a four. Club root, on the other hand, is rated on a zero to three scale. And these were some plants taken from the fall in Manitoba. They were volunteers in a pea field, and that would probably be rated a three. Vericillium stripe is a newer disease to us and a rating scale is still being developed and field tested. On the left there we have some plants with black leg, the four on the right are affected by verticillum stripe and that's the internal discoloration that we often see at the time we're rating. Here's a little overview of the last five years in Manitoba. And uh, you can see the last time sclerotinia had high prevalence was in 2017. In the four dry years since, it's been dropping and this year it was almost negligible. Black leg and verisilium stripe, on the other hand, seem to have uh, thrived in dry conditions and verisilium stripe seems to be on the rise. Now here's a cross prairie comparison of how much surveying we did in Manitoba, we looked at 135 fields. We actually had targeted about 150. Um, Saskatchewan, bigger geography, they looked at 213 fields. In Alberta, 
Uh, the general survey looked at 371 fields. Um, the 35 in the Edmonton region were targeted at fields where club route had been documented previously. So there's a grand total of uh, 754 field, field surveyed. Um, most of the time we're targeting the growth stage around 30 to 60% color change. Now, uh, rapidly advancing maturity made it difficult to achieve our targeted numbers. How do we decide where to survey and how intensively to survey? Well, in Manitoba, we use a five-year average of um, canola production within an RM, and we use that to determine how many fields to, to uh, look at in a particular RM. The cut line we used in 2021 was 10,000 acres. Here are the results of the Manitoba Canola Survey from 2021. First should explain what prevalence and incidence are. Prevalence is um, how many of the fields that we looked at had any measurable disease of that, uh, that particular disease. Incidence is within those fields, how uh, many plants were showing symptoms. And severity, of course, is the intensity of those symptoms. See, I have an asterisk beside pod spot aster, yellow is in verticillium. There we're showing the incidence just in infected crops. And of course, uh, the picture is of uh, aster yellows, which is quite evident when it's in a field uh, because it sticks up above the rest of the canopy. Uh, it's eye-catching, but many times uh, it's not among the 100 plants that we collect in our W pattern. And um, for that reason, when we see it in the field but don't collect it, we rate it as trace. So that's included in the incidence of aster yellows, fairly low in Manitoba. Now let's move on to Saskatchewan, where uh, they had a lower prevalence of black plague um, and also lower incidence. Severity was very similar to what we had in Manitoba. They had more sclerotinia stem rot. Um, it's noted, though, that that was largely from irrigated areas. And uh, likewise, pod spot would have been higher because of uh, many of the fields being in irrigated condition. Um, Aster yellows, a higher percentage than we had in Manitoba. And verticillium, I have an asterisk because they only had two suspected cases. I think those are still being confirmed. Moving on to Alberta. 375, 371 fields. They had a higher prevalence of black leg, uh, but in fairly low severity. And stem rot, a uh, quarter of the crops they looked at had some, but the incidence was very low and they weren't even uh, checking on the severity. Club root, though, is one that is higher in Alberta, and 9% of the fields surveyed as part of the regular survey had some club root, again, at fairly low incidence. And they had a number of confirmed cases of verticillium stripe. Okay, here's a weird one. Uh, you might've seen this at the end of the season. A lot of people reported that harvesting equipment became coated with uh, grayish white dust. What was that? Well, it is powdery mildew, a disease that only occurs um, maybe once in 10 years and in isolated spots this year, it might have been a little more widespread. And it was on those canola crops that uh, weren't harvested till late in the season were left standing. The conditions that favor powdery mildew are uh, warm days or even hot, dry days and cool nights. These are dew forming conditions. And when the pathogen is present, it can uh, multiply very, very quickly and result in that dust you saw on your harvesting equipment. Club root is an issue right across the problem provinces, across the prairies here in Manitoba. Um, we still consider it a looming threat. We don't often see it in our surveys. We didn't at all in 2020. Um, this picture is from 2019 when one of our agronomists, Rajon Picard, found some at low levels in a field as part of the survey. But at that time, this was the uh, severity of symptoms we were seeing. That would probably be rated a one on the zero to three scale. This fall, uh, Dane and I were up to a field in uh, northwestern Manitoba, 
and uh, the problem was on volunteer canola in a pea crop and there's the intensity of the, the symptoms that would likely be rated as a three on the zero to three scale. Um, the way we report on club root distribution in Manitoba is or has been different from elsewhere. Um, the red zones are places where there's a high level of spores in the soil and or symptomatic plants. So from 2019, when that uh, picture was taken to 2020, we added two RMs where symptomatic um, plants were found. And you may know that um, at that time, 2020, Manitoba um, was challenged to put out a map that looked similar to Saskatchewan's because they used different criteria for reporting. So we took their criteria and put them into a map. This is based on the same data as uh, you saw in the previous map. However, here, the blue represents RMs that were surveyed, soil taken many times, and yet uh, no symptoms at all, um, just spores detected in the soil. And those that are yellow, anywhere between one and 10 fields um, have been found with symptoms. And in that hot spot down in the south central region, uh, we've had more than 10 fields identified with symptoms. If you put the two provinces side by side, um, you can see that uh, along the border, there is kind of agreement on where club root has been found in our northwest and their uh, east central region. So that's all I had for you today. Um, I hope there's time for questions, maybe not. But in any case, thank you for your attention and we'll stop it there. Thank you.